Now let's see the branches. Hutchinson and Waters illustrated their idea of English language teaching by the picture of a tree. In this picture, ESP is supposed to general English, which is usually taught for exam purposes. In this tree, we are going to see that the roots of the ELT tree represent the learning and communication, while the trunk represents the language teaching. The next division represents the English language teaching out of which three branches um, indicate. First of all, English as a mother tongue, English as a foreign language, and English as a second language. ESP, that is to say English for specific purposes, is broken down into three branches. We have the first one, English for science and technology, here. Then we have English for business and economy, and the third branch we have English for social sciences. Okay? And each of the subject, each of these subject areas is further divided into three branches. English for academic purposes and English for occupational purposes, as you can see in each of them. Um, an example of English for occupational purposes for English for science and technology is English for technician, for example. Whereas a, an example of English for academic purposes, you have English for medical studies. So, at the top of the tree, you can see that we have um, the courses which are very specific for each field. But we have to bear in mind that sometimes this division cannot be so clear because some uh, people can be working and studying simultaneously and they can take two courses simultaneously and sometimes the division on, between English for academic purposes and English for occupational purposes is not so clear. Okay, now let's see the ESP characteristics. Uh, ESP is a recognizable activity of English language teaching with some specific characteristics that Levens and St. John's tried to apply a series of characteristics, some absolute and some variable. To apply to al <laughs> some absolute and some variable, um, no. ESP, <coughs> ESP is a recognizable activity of English language teaching with some specific characteristics. Dudley Evans and St. John's tried to apply a series of characteristics, some absolute and some variable, to outline the major features of ESP. We are going to see first the absolute characteristics of these two authors. Um, we have the first one. ESP is defined to meet specific needs of the learners. Number two, ESP makes use of underlying methodology and activities of the discipline itself. Number three, ESP is centered on the language that is to say grammar, lexis, register, skills, discourse, and general appropriate to these activities. These are the absolute characteristics. Now let's move to the variable ones. Number one, ESP may be related to or designed for a specific disciplines. Number 
Now let's see the verbal characteristics. Number one, ESP may be related to or designed for specific disciplines. Number two, ESP may use in a specific teaching situation a different methodology from that of general English. Number three, ESP is likely to be designed for adult learners either at a tertiary level institution or in a professional work situation. It could, however, be for learners at secondary school level. Number four, ESP is generally designed for intermediate or advanced students. And number five, most ESP courses assume some basic knowledge of the language system, but it can be used with beginners. Here we have that a, it is obvious that the absolute characteristics are specific to ESP uh, because learners' needs are of vital importance when designing language activities. As regards the verbal characteristics or the verbal features, ESP courses can be designed for an ESP for a specific group using a definite teaching methodology. Nevertheless, all learners, categories and disciplines can be concerned with ESP. For that reason, ESP should be seen simply as an approach to teaching or what Dudley Evans and St. John's illustrate as an attitude of mind. Similarly, in this way, Hutchinson and Waters stated that ESP should be properly be seen not as a part, any particular language product, but as a, an approach to language teaching in which all decisions as to content and method are based on the learner's reasons for learning. This is quite important for you as future English ESP teachers. This is quite important for you to bear in mind the obvious and the variable characteristics. Because when you design a course, this uh, characteristic should be taken into account in the process of the course design. Especially if you take into account that ESP, as Hutchinson, there you have, or the other authors, Dudley, Evans, and St. John's stated, that we should regard ESP um, not as um, a language product. We should regard it as an approach to language teaching. And all the decision that we make when designing a course, an ESP course, should be based on the learner's needs, the learner's um, necessities that they have for learning, for learning, um, for learning, an, for learning ESP. Okay.